Hello everyone! Happy New Year! Oh, you gotta get one of those uh, blow things. <laughs> Did you, uh, Chris, were you uh, blowing those blow things last night? At, uh, at No, uh, actually they were using a feed for New Year's countdown that was about a minute and a half behind. And oh, I celebrated no. New Year's by myself saying <laughs> while everybody was over closer to the TV looking at the feed. And I'm like, no, it's, it's sooner than that. And yeah, so that's how that went. But no, no <laughs> yeah. none of those loud streamer things. I mean, what a perfect analogy to 2022, eh? <laughs> so anyway, happy New Year's, everybody! woo God, I was... Um, Actually, I did. One thing I did do is that last night I treated myself to a nice steak. Um, so I uh, had a nice steak, a pretty quiet evening. But uh, anyway, so happy New Year's, everybody. Um, let's uh, let's go kick uh, 2023's butt. If anything, this makes perfect sense. Uh, the site's actually very quiet. Um, everybody is uh, on holiday. And actually, I see uh, there are a couple assets, and they just make absolutely perfect sense. Uh, uh, we should be in there pounding the table. We should be in there uh, accumulating, getting ready for the next cycle. And you go out into the public, and nobody's even the slightest bit interested in crypto. In fact, what a perfect analogy. I don't want to play too much of it because you always get into trouble with these things. But if you go over to my YouTube feed, uh, there was this uh, this uh, video that was posted, uh, Little Bubble. I suppose, uh, like I said, I don't want to play too much. You don't want to get into copyright problems with YouTube and stuff. But what a perfect analogy uh, of uh, the, the current market state, right? I mean, basically, their theme is... <laughs> so... Uh, it just, it, you know, I've told you guys before that um, um, you can you can literally set your watch to the bottoms in the market when that uh, Remy guy is uh, posting videos. And of course, it's the exact opposite. Bitcoin's wonderful. We're all billionaires. <laughs> That's a top in the market. Bitcoin's uh, the dumps. Uh, we're all bankrupt. That's the bottom of the market. It's quite remarkable, really. So uh, it is interesting that this is the backdrop, and unfortunately, the space is very sanguine right now. Don't even really hear too much. Like, uh, you know, if you go on crypto Twitter right now, like I said, this kind of message, this is, I mean, these guys just blatantly told SBF to go F himself <laughs> right on a music video. And if anything, you know, one thing I'm very impressed with, and I don't know uh, this little bubble, maybe these guys are actually very smart. Uh, very educated in this space, but I got to say that this generation is much more financially educated than, uh, than my generation. I mean, I remember sitting in like economics classes when I was in high school and even first year university for that matter. And man, the kids were dumb as that. I mean, they just, you know, like the teacher's like, how does your checking account work? You know, that kind of, that's the furthest they go with their economics. Uh, but I have to say this generation, very, very smart. Like you would have never heard conversations like this in like social media. I mean, how many hits did this thing? It's got 4,000 views. Well, I guess that was a week or two ago. Anyway, um, I'm not quite sure this person in particular, but it was it's an interesting anecdote of the space right now. They're very, very angry, bitter, frustrated, which is understandable. This is economics 101. And unfortunately, it's just the way the market works. You know, that's the worst part about this is that actually there's nothing really new going on here. And you guys are probably sick and tired of me saying stuff like that. But you know, like this Litecoin tweet that I just put out here. Actually, to me, this seems like a very rational investment decision. Uh, what is rational analysis? Well, theoretically, it's the, it's the intersection of where somebody says, you know, fundamentally, this thing is a buy because of this. And I think your happening events are fantastic fundamental drivers. Uh, in this space, this crypto space, especially if you have POW, I'm not so convinced about POS and that whole idea. In fact, and I'm starting to hear talks now um, that are saying things like Ethereum now being POS actually makes it extremely vulnerable to, uh, 
to basically the one percent telling uh, telling the users of the platform um, what's uh, what's law and what isn't. Uh, you know, we'll see how that story evolves over time. Um, but uh, when it comes to something like POW, uh, this whole idea of proof of work and the work itself is actually valuable. I still think this is a, the purest play in crypto. I, I understand Mr. Vitalik's supercomputer and uh, smart contracts. They definitely have a role in this world. But uh, unfortunately, I haven't figured out how you actually uh, like determine what the value of a POS coin is versus something like a POW coin. You can actually come up with value metrics. I don't actually have the value metric on the screen on this in particular. What I would just simply say is uh, having events quite literally reset the whole sort of fundamental landscape. And it actually makes people uh, readjust all of their thinking. So you can't just go on autopilot. So once every four years, the whole damn thing needs to be reset and all the calculus and stuff redetermined, which I think acts as a, a beautiful sort of, you know, uh, let's wash out the previous bull market. And really, you know, these coins, it is venture capital. So it's understandable that the price appreciation is a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the hallmark of venture capital folks just get used to it um and unfortunately what we have to do is we have to actually get rid of the crazy and you have to sort of flush things out to what sort of value uh and remove all the public you know sort of get rich quick kind of thinking and start the whole darn process all over again um also, too, the interesting thing about Litecoin is I do find, you know, I even put the tweet out here. I can already hear the Chinese Ponzi coming because if you actually look at Litecoin back, um, I think it was the 2000, I want to say the 2015-16 bottom, there was actually quite a famous uh, Chinese Ponzi that bid the price of Litecoin from like a buck all the way up to like $9. So that's a bit, you know, that's about a 510x uh, somewhere in that neighborhood into that happening event. So could we see that happen again? I don't know what I would just simply say. And actually, I kicked this idea around the site this morning is um, you don't you don't hear Brian going on, you know, 10x, 100x. Ah, look at me. I'm a bala driving Lambos and stuff. You know, I'm kind of like the old country bumpkin driving along in his uh 1929 uh, uh, Dodge uh, pickup truck that uh, he's at, had rebuilt four times because he's such a cheap ass. <laughs> but the, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And all that kind of talk. I think here is a really, really good example where you could generate a risk-free trade going forward and actually you know, get some of these light coins, maybe throw them on like a ledger wallet or something like that. Uh, where the risk, the actual risk of ownership is basically zero. I mean, isn't that what we all kind of want? You know, like if you had been able to buy um, 100 shares of Apple computer in 1980 or 81 or 82 and, and flip it through that particular bull market and get yourself some free shares, you know, the following 15 years were crap, right? And you're sitting there going, oh, thanks for the free shares, Brian, way to go. But then look at what happened here into this 2020 peak. You know, I mean, silly stocks trading at like 50 times book. <laughs> Ridiculous numbers. Uh, and, you know, the whole, you could do the same story on Amazon, you know, that um, Allen story and all that. And actually, this is an interesting play on Allen because technically, um, if you're, uh, how do you say this? Uh, if you are going to use Doge as some sort of monetary unit going forward, which is, I think, what Alan's plan is, don't you need Litecoin as the validation of the network? I think so. So in a weird sort of way, by Alan being so long Doge and Doge sort of being so in intimately ingrained into uh his ecosystem, it almost means that for, by definition, Litecoin uh, must 
uh, exist and, and continue its, its happening events. And, and in a weird sort of way, it kind of deflects the attention. He can muck around with Doge and, you know, take the price, uh, you know, hundred X off of the, his, his buy levels and stuff and not really affect the network or the operation of it too much because the network's validated by uh, Litecoin. So I thought that was a really interesting spin. In a weird sort of way, the more Alan tweets and the more he gets involved in social media and he wants to create this sort of cryptocurrency-based uh, new monetary system, and I have a feeling that's where he's going with the whole Twitter thing, um, uh, the better the fundamental story is for Litecoin, I might argue. Suppose there might be some day that he comes along and says, I, I'm just going to move Doge completely off of using Litecoin as a validation. I don't know. I don't know the story that well. But, you know, in a weird sort of way, Chico actually believes that uh, that uh, Mr. Musk was the creator of Bitcoin. I don't buy the story, but I do understand the logic because keep in mind, uh, Alan did start PayPal. Uh, so if anybody was going to be in a position to create a blockchain, that kind of concept and understand the way the mechanics of the sort of international money system works. I mean, who wouldn't who wouldn't know it any better? And if anything, you might argue that he tried to do it with PayPal and then he ran up against the fiat currency system and uh, he just gave up and ended up selling it and uh, moving on to his next project. So uh, I like this story. Fundamentally, this really resonates well with me. And the irony of it all is that you're like, well, you know, Brian, that's not exactly. Uh, first off, is the public even the slightest bit interested in um, in um, Litecoin right now and investing, going long crypto? No, <laughs> if anything, that's perfect. You know, I mean, God, I could, I, you know, I, I always show you these images on these videos, I, you know, up at the top of the market when, you know, price was way up top here. I couldn't, I, I couldn't plead with people to not buy and, and not participate. Now, ironically enough, there's, there's nobody interested in this space right now. And I would say, you know, I'm the type of guy where I'd look at that and I go, you know, I could, I could actually teach a whole bloody course just off of this one image right here. This is one image. There's so much stuff that uh, you can learn from. Obviously, there's no uh, guarantees from management. There never is. But I would say the irony of it all is uh, actually stepping in and taking a risk here. Um, and, you know, we should point out. Oh my God, if I'm not mistaken, we actually all have to officially turn into bulls now. I mean, that's the irony of all this, eh? So we pop on over to uh, our wonderful blog and we check in with Josh and his wonderfulness. I swear, oh, Josh, I, I, you know, I have to say, you know, to start 2023 off, we got to start out with, wow. All of these TRI people, and I could, Jesus, I could probably spend oh, a half hour just people, going and I through could, them all. I'm so proud of all of you. I really am. You're such great people. So nice to be surrounded by all of you. I really wanted to get that Portugal property going so we could all sort of physically, you know, interact. Well, <laughs> that doesn't sound very good, does it? <laughs> Let's try that again. You know, just be in the same room with each other. Uh, you don't need to go other places, Brian. Silly potty mouth, brain, whatever. Um, so anyway, our blog a writer, and wow, I'm not allowed to show you guys, but he's coming up with a blog piece and um, um, an information infographic, I think they call it. Oh my God, I showed it, or he showed it to me the other day, and I was just like, wow. That is impressive. So uh, be, be, if anything, we probably got to do t-shirts, coffee mugs, mouse pads, uh, the whole damn thing. I mean, wow, it's just incredible the stuff this guy's coming up with. But the point of the matter here is, and now thank God, right? We spent like a year and a half going, oh my God, the next year and a half is going to be horrible. But now look, what year is it? It is officially, where the hell are we here? Here we are, 2023. I think I gotta zoom in, hold on. There you go. We are officially in the bottoming year. Oh, it's a goddamn miracle. Can I see that on my screen somewhere, please? 2023, 2023, it's a miracle. It's 
it's a miracle. <laughs> Actually, I like that, Josh. Right, so we should uh, we should uh, see it says C. There's C. Years of hard times. Oh boy, I bet it's this 2023. The public is going to be thinking that it, it, it this is just a oh, horrible existence. I mean, you know, poor people. You see what's been going on in China right now. I mean, literally, it's like cats and dogs living together. It's absolute insanity. People are like the. You know, this is like Bill Gates' worst case scenario in early uh, 2020. He went on some talk show and he goes, well, you don't want to see dead bodies in the streets. And now uh, I think actually you're going to get that in China. They're like literally saying like li the, the hospital rooms, the morgues, everything's just piling up there. And then of course, you got what's going on in Eastern Europe. Thanks a lot, Vladi. I mean, there's no reason why these all these people have to die other than just one gentleman's ego. But anyway, that's another conversation for another day. But the point here is, if you're a wise, shrewd investor, the irony of it all is that, hey, look, we're supposed to be buying our corner lots. Time to start buying stocks. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? So, you know, I might argue, is there a corner lot in... Uh, now, interesting, Joshua there makes reference to... Um, uh, Mana and Decentraland. Right? We might even uh, just for fun pull up that chart. I haven't looked at it. I mean, but look at this. What the hell? These are W's. What's going on here? Looks like ETH is about to W out. Look at Litecoin. I mean, gee whiz. That, that chart's pointing up. It's not pointing down. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Uh, I find that amusing. Anyway, so I did up this chart. We can always talk about this in a bit. And I tell you, man, if I can get any more, um, oops on the books here uh, from, uh, what's this number here? 6740. I don't know if I could get any more on the books from that level there. I mean, that is the definition of Wyckoff checks if you've ever seen them. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, what fog and bombs. I think actually I have to use that as a fog and bomb now. So interesting how 4.669 lines up with 50% up there. Um, I did notice this 1.618 off of this ABCD, which would make it an alt ABCD, takes us up into uh, Collins 38.2 uh, up there. I mean, you know, what letter of the alphabet is that, folks? I mean, if you need help, it's uh, down, up, down, up, right? Um, the easy way for you to remember this is uh, maybe bookmark. Um, uh where do i have it here i don't know if i've uh international and you uh i don't know how it works actually maybe i'll see it in my uh in my media i think i'll see the picture in here somewhere uh boom where's good old bert well it's probably been a while since i put this out Anyway, uh, yeah, probably the easiest way for me to find it is to show you the picture. Question is, where do we have it? Uh, if you don't have this uh, in your uh, notes, uh, I think this is an excellent reference piece. Of course, I got to find it first. Where is it? International Club Brotherhood, I think it is. Mind you, you're not allowed to say those kind of things in this world. Uh, of W lovers, but it's a good old Bert. Where the hell's Bert? Bert, 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 where are you, Bert? Bert, Bert, Bert is the word. There he is. So just think of this guy. And there is a tweet somewhere in here. I love putting this thing out that you can see. Uh, choo, 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 choo. I would take a screenshot of that. If you are uh, following along, watching, I mean, there's 20 people watching, right? Um, <clears throat> you really want to be this guy. <laughs> National Association of W Lovers. I mean, isn't that so perfect? <laughs> Is that not a perfect trader's uh, logo? If anything, I would like to uh, call up uh, Sesame Street and see if we could, <laughs> if we could get the, the permission to use that anyway. So, uh, yeah, I mean, gee whiz, folks. I mean, that's about as W-E as W's get. 
Uh, and you even have this beautiful puke out candle. So, you, you know, you've often heard me say candle body lows for trade location. Probably sneaking in there if you could uh, would be not a bad idea. But this whole W down, up, down, breakout. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, interesting. You could go off of 67.40. I'd also say, too, because of this funny candle, because this now may, it might just be a function of stamp. I don't know. But we just went to new lows there. Point here is, gee whiz, that's looking. If anything, it's kind of better that it looks like this because, uh, you know, that this little move here was to flush out all the noobs and break their hearts. And then, of course, they take the darn thing up. Uh, no real buy signal here right now. This is this could potentially be a fractal. I was wondering whether this was going to be an inside bar, but it's just a fractal now. And my really simple rule of trading is... I want to buy when I see a W on the other side of market structure trend lines. And that's about as market structure as you're going to get, folks. Um, so break of the trend line, just an absolute war right on that trend line. That's exactly what you want to see. And of course, the bulls won on the other side of the trend line. So if I can get any kind of W down in here, you can see here are my bot levels. This is a trade setup that I like to trade. Uh, <clears throat> question is, how can you see it? It's so dark, Brad. Uh, which one is it? Anyway, maybe we'll go like that. I thought I could uh, use one color. Oh, it must be this one. There we go. Hey, I'll make it yellow for you. Boom. There you go. So you can see the trade's already setting itself up. I mean, it's so pretty. So is that a trade I'd be willing to take a risk off of? You bet. Every day of the week. Uh, if I go down to like um, daily chart. What, uh, there's that big honking trend line. Huge breakout. <laughs> what was really cool about this is you can actually see this is a bit of a head and shoulders pattern up here. Uh, so you go boom, 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 boom. So there it is. Right? Um, and this actually draws like technical objectives because uh, head and shoulders, you just measure the distance from the head down to the neckline. Yeah, I'll be a little bit generous on both sides. Uh, and project that off of the lows. And you can see we came right down into that level. If I sharpen that up a little bit, let's be a little bit crisper, Brian. And go boosh. You can actually see, I think it like hit it like right on the nose. It's quite remarkable. So you can see um, they totally nailed that head and shoulders objective. I mean, just absolutely textbook doink. <laughs> and then it just stopped on a dime and said, that's it. I'm done going down. Time to go up. And interestingly enough, just even off of this chart, you can go boom. Boom, and then to draw your ch uh, channel correctly, you go off of that high there. So really, I wouldn't be surprised if you get some sort of pop on this thing, especially if we go and take that high out there, because this will turn into a little bit of an A, B, C, D going the other direction. There, there. Actually, here, let's do the arrows going the other way. There. 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 Like so. So I could see a nice little rally up into this area, which also would make sense too. You know, it's a trader's life, rah, rah, rah. What do you think the odds are that this is up into a reload short term? So 61.8 <clears throat> man, man level. Actually, Paul, Romanian rocket moon man level. <laughs> anyway, candle body highs for trade location. You know, if you are thinking about maybe taking a little bit of profits on maybe you're a swing trader or something like that. Yeah, looking for some resistance up there. That's totally fine. Uh, point here is that uh, my ultimate objective here is uh, I could very easily see conservatively, uh, we jump up into this uh, 100, 105. And of course, that makes sense, right? Big fat round numbers. Probably also too, if you did this range here. Yeah, there you go. So there's some reload zones uh, for the market. To, there's 114, Brian's favorite fib. Uh, 78.6, and you can see there's a cute little lamb right off that level. So my hunch, though, is that, you know, we're going into uh, this halvening event. And the interesting thing about Litecoin, uh, I don't know how long you've been in this space, um, but uh, back, uh, oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, you know, because, you know, it's so funny how 
Uh, it's so hard to get long-term data on this stuff. Um, but once upon a time, uh, I guess I'll just do it on a new chart. Uh, we got to find an exchange that it's on now, so that's always tough. And it's interesting how uh, I'm more interested in Litecoin right now than I really am in Bitcoin. Uh, Phoenix, I think, has a lot of data. Let's see what we got there. They go back, way back, going. Yeah, there we go, back here. So uh, I don't even know if any of you guys were in this space, anybody watching this video now, but I remember this specifically. So I get the impression, remember we said that we're looking for a bottom in this whole space, somewhere around this December, January, 2015 uh, event. Chad disconnected. Please wait while we try to reconnect you. Unable to connect to chat. Please try again later. You see that, uh, Chris? Is that for you or is that just for me? Okay. All right, well, that's cool. Okay, cool. So point of the matter here is this is Litecoin. I remember I told you, like, I think that this whole space we just went through. Notice uh, this was uh, November, right? November 2013. So that's basically the entire year of uh, 2014 was just garbage, right? And there it's 2015. Just bleh, one direction, yuck. Then uh, we get into the new year, and of course, Litecoin has its happening uh, ahead of Bitcoin. You can see, in fact, actually, I think the, the happening was like right in this area here. And I mean, look at this. This is, pretty, you know, you, you want to make some money from trading? The irony of it all is that uh, there's a lot of people in this space that are more like bandwagon followers. They're not really sort of Hey, I want to actually make some money. I, they, you know, a lot of times they just want to be in sort of some cult, some clique where they feel accepted and everybody around them's happy and there's a big party and it's just, you know, rah, rah, rah. Lots of stories of, uh, you know, hookers and blow and all that kind of stuff. Um, but actually to set yourself up to actually make money from trading, the irony of it all is you got to really step in at the bottom end of the range. So... Um, interesting on this one, when nobody else is interested, nobody at the party is interested. Interesting on this one, you notice there is no bottom here. Right? The actual weekly W didn't start firing until over here. Could we have to go through a period like this? I mean, are we in some sort of wishy-washy where, um, I mean, this was absolutely textbook. You can't get any more textbook than this. Um, you know, if I go boom, boom, can I force myself to come in at the bottom end of the range and acquire? And I even remember when this happened, like the whole market sort of puked out and Phoenix kind of went a little bit crazy. Uh, there was a big hack. And of course, uh, Phoenix, uh, and I don't, I can't remember if the hack was before this or after this, but anyway. Um, so point of matter here is, I mean, this is just absolutely beautiful. Actually, and it was on the daily brief. I think it was on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. I actually walked through almost an exactly same sort of trade that developed off of like uh, the crude oil markets using almost exactly the same principle. And uh, this was like right off like a, you know, a one hour chart pointed this as an important level. Then once you get to that level, you actually see this pattern develop and a beautiful little buy uh, bottom came in on that. That was in the crude oil market. This is a Litecoin market. And you know what this speaks to? And this is the irony of this crazy world is like, what are we looking at? This is a daily chart. That that chart that I was showing, or I wasn't showing you, but anybody on the site uh, from Friday, that was like a three minute chart or nine minute chart on the crude oil. And, you know, here is a big fat uh, monthly chart in the bond market. And this is, I mean, this is like your old uh, grandpa and grandma uh, kind of, well, maybe not grandma, but grandpa trading. Um, and, um, you know, what do they call them? Like legacy markets kind of idea. Um, well, that interesting. Google just totally kicked me out there. Anyway, you're showing everything's fine over there. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, and it's the same principle. 
Right, you can see the W down in here. In fact, actually, the irony of it all, this is a monthly chart of fixed income borrowing bonds, government bonds. I'd never buy a government bond. What are you, crazy? And yet the irony of it all is if you go into uh, TRI's trading library uh, and you see that you can, uh, where are we here? Uh, trading range, right? The shark. And I think the shark setup is like off of like a piece of crap uh, shit coin, Blitz. Is this thing even still around? I don't even know. But hopefully you to see it's the exact same principle. Big fat W, big rally, draw your fibs, 78.6 off of the original market structure bottom. I mean, it's identical. This is absolutely identical trade. No difference. How ironic, eh? I mean, that's that's the irony of TA is that it's uh, ag time frame agnostic. It doesn't care monthly, weekly, quarterly, one hour, five minute, one minute, like the, the universe is fractal. And the only way that you can really understand that, but this might fry your brain. So <laughs> if, if you are easily brain fried, uh, maybe, uh, uh, although I don't know where I have it. Do I have it over here? Uh, maybe it's over here. Uh, God, you know what? Actually, I even remember uh, we haven't had these kind of videos yet. Remember this guy, Chris? Do you remember this guy? Does this look at all familiar to you? Every uh, time, there's always somebody that does a, a sound over with whatever the uh, the particular scandal is, and they always do this guy, and they always put the uh, the words. So, where's the, these guys? I'm so disappointed. So there should be one old thing here about Sam Bankman Freed, right? They definitely should do one of these. And then we con them into actually thinking that, Alt, what is it, Alta Vista or Alta Mirror or Alta blah, 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 or Alameda, that's it, was actually a real company. I mean, you, they, they loaned the FTX tokens and they based it on the market value and they used that market value as collateral. So, of course, the price of FTX collapses, which these things always do in venture cap. What goes up must come down. I mean, hell, you see this Litecoin chart. You'd think that these people would have learned. I mean, come on. I mean, hell, you look at the bond market. The, the grownups do exactly the same thing as well. I mean, the irony of it all is that there's no difference. Government bonds or Litecoin. It's the same crap. It's just a different pile. Anyway, <laughs> I get all excited there. Sorry, uh, uh, that's not even what I wanted to show you. But uh, where's where's Hitler? Yeah, here's Hitler. So I mean, it, it, where's this video? We got to have one of these done on uh, on like on uh, FTX. <laughs> the only problem with this is that is uh, is is he Jewish? Is that is uh, Bankman Freed Jewish? I bet it is, right? So they they can't touch that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so but every cycle we always have one of these right this one the chinese the chinese dumped like white the chinese dumped right after we bought <laughs> it's, uh, if i'm not mistaken this one i think seven years ago i think this one was actually done on the uh the ponzi scheme i think this was this was this video was done through this event <laughs> so if you're Try and learn those people. If you're going to make, you know, if you're going to step in and buy this, and that's a beautiful buy, for God's sakes, you got to learn to pay yourself. You have to pay yourself because this is venture capital. It'll go up and down like orange, orange. And the problem here, of course, is right up at the top here. This is, of course, when the public comes in and buy. It's the same cliche, everybody cycle. Actually, I got to close the window. I opened the window because it was too hot. Now it's too cold in here. Anyway, so I'm doing a lot of blabbing here every day. Hey, everybody, sorry if I'm wasting your time. Somebody says uh, over there on YouTube says, is this where we ask our quick questions? You can ask. Um, I don't know whether you're part of the site, and this is really what I should be doing today, but I was just, I, I honestly, I woke up and I saw that Litecoin chart and I was like, oh my God. I mean, excuse my French, you know, people who don't like to take the Lord's name in vain. But frankly speaking, I couldn't believe this when I saw this. Uh, oh, darn. I <laughs> put the color back to the way it was. What did I just do there? 
Oh, darn. I went there. Yeah, where was I? Uh, okay, well, here, I'll put it manually. Um, I, I honestly, I couldn't believe it when I saw this this morning. I, I was just like, oh my goodness, is that for real? Like, I literally couldn't believe that uh, they were doing what they were doing here. Um, so needless to say, I am going to be accumulating as much Litecoin as I possibly can over the next few months. Now, the interesting thing about this chart, and then we'll move on to sort of Q&A and stuff, because that's really what I'm supposed to be doing here today. But just understand that you can see even now, um, they can rip this market now down. They can actually generate a 42% loss here from where we are right now. That is totally realistic. So this could very easily happen. And remember our rule. Our rule is we want to see a W on the other side of this primary trend line. Now, I might even argue that you're probably best to be working off of things like uh, maybe even like a two day chart to really let this W come in. Um, and if anything, what I think you want to be doing is you want to just simply say, look at there's this big honking market structure signal. If we get, because if, okay, if we get Ws and now we've got actually a little bit of uh, market structure here in the short term to work with. So you can even say, if we get a nice W on the other side of this trend line, because now we can start talking like, you know, daily timeframes, lower timeframes, there's that trend line. If we can get a W on the other side of this trend line over here, I actually think you're going to get a, what's called a trend continuation trade, because this thing's already put in its weekly W. Uh, and now this actually sets up the trend continuation trade, which is these bot levels. And I know it gets tough to see them because I put the color different. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of a color you can see, but it's not overwhelming. There you go. So I'm going to be hunting the trend. I mean, first and foremost, if I can get a dump back down against these lows, I'm so going to be in there buying. Uh, and that's sort of like reload zones. So you can see that would be down in this area. There's Brian's favorite FIB, 78.6. And this would be predicated on they're going to dump crypto right out of the gate beginning of the year, which they very easily could. Notice this candle body low happens to correspond with Brian's favorite uh, FIB, 78.6, which happens to correspond with this nice, mar actually validated market structure validated trend line. So if I can get a buy down in there, oh, I'd love it. Absolutely beautiful. I don't think they're going to give that though. I think this trend line is just going to, or excuse me, this moving average is going to be way too strong. But nonetheless, I wouldn't be surprised if they mess around here. They've just broken through this trend line. It's the very beginning of the year. If anything, this is cool because now we can start doing things like January barometer. We can start doing things like the first two weeks of the coming quarter. So we can get sort of a feel for what the coming year is going to look like. I don't think it's a huge hurry. You got to, oh my God, you got to go and buy this tomorrow. No, I don't think so. I mean, the ideal level to try and buy, I think, is like this 6740. That's this big W level. Boom, 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 boom. And because of this monkey business down in here, I actually think that they'll probably take some more time and develop this W a bit more. Um, also, too, once we finish the January barometer, usually beginning of February, we go into a little bit of a funk. Um, and, you know, the cliche for uh, commodities investing, you buy the middle of February, not the middle of January. You want to let the January barometer play itself out, middle of February. So if we can take that next month, notice here, 14th of February, that's the middle of February. And if I can have some sort of W form off of this 25 level, oh my goodness, bots start coming alive big time. And the interesting thing about this level, and this is why I think, um, uh, this is why I think that, that this is probably a bottom because notice, um, you know, things like 2.618 uh, line up with, uh, actually maybe even 4.669s line up with 50% levels. 
uh, and this uh, alt A, B, C, D takes us up into 38.2s, you know, like Colin and the Dump Chasers. I don't know whether they're, uh, you know, Colin over at Hero. I think, yeah, I actually, I don't even know if he's still there or not. But anyway, uh, this was a favorite level of his. Also notice too, look left. If we actually start accepting higher, where are we going to run into resistance? We got that level there, that level there, that level there. So these are all areas where these guys bought and they would love nothing more than get, get the heck out of those bad trades. Um, so, I, you know, like you can see, target, target, target. I got a whole bunch of juicy targets. And lo and behold, from about this level, especially that 6740 area, notice that the double uh, up here, excuse me, the move up into this uh, resistance area and all these technical target levels is just about exactly a double. Oh, what a surprise. So this is sort of like the trade is actually being manufactured. I've seen this so many times in my career. It's ridiculous. This trade is being pre-set up. And of course, Joey Diamonds and stuff, they hate when I tell the public this shit. But you can literally see the trade. What's going to happen here? Smart money buys. They are going to sell half on a double. And for the rest of their lives, they have a risk-free trade on Litecoin. And if Mr. You-Know-Who does you-know-what with Dogecoin and Litecoin's still attached to it, you might find Litecoin's in the thousands of dollars down the road. And here is a way to generate a risk-free position for the rest of your lives. And that's exactly what I think the institutional players are doing right now. They see this. So, you know, I also bill this, and this is what I sort of tweeted out earlier. This is actually what I'm really trying to teach you guys is that, and it sucks because nobody ever listens. And of course, when we are not in good rational positions, that's when the public wants to buy and nobody pays attention to any of my videos. I think this is actually a quote unquote rational idea. What the hell does that mean? Well, quite literally, you got a couple camps in the marketplace that are constantly fighting with each other. So you got the uh, fundamentalist over here, and you got the technicians over here, and they hate each other, right? Technicians and fundamentalists, by definition, hate each other. And really, our job is not to say that technical analysis is better than fundamental analysis. Like, And I'm seeing this a lot on YouTube now. Which one's better? Which is the better? And frankly speaking, I don't care. <laughs> but what I would say is that when you got the fundamentalists saying, well, I think the value is over here, and you got the technicians over here saying, I think that the, uh, the value is over here, and they're a million miles apart from each other. You know, maybe these guys are saying the asset's worth five bucks and these guys are saying, well, I think the trend is going down. Um, so I want to short it, whatever, something along those lines. Man, who knows what the price is. But they're not in agreement, then I don't really want to participate in the market. Of course, when we zoom all the way up here and you get the market just going absolutely apeshit to the upside, like in this kind of environment, Obviously, the fundamentalists are going to be like, value? What are you on drugs? <laughs> There's no value here. This is the public buying, right? So what we want to do is we want to try and focus on areas where the fundamentalists do their research and the technicians do their research. And it turns out that actually they agree. And that is this window right in here. This is the only part of the market that we're really, we should be interested in. Now, I mean, it's easier said than done because the problem is that, you know, when, um, when stuff is a good fundamental buy, um, you might sit there technically waiting, 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 not really that good of a buy. You know, they're getting more interested. And then you notice that when these two actually agree, we have a fundamental driver coming up. And the thing is, is you can actually do the math on what actual the cost of production of Litecoin is. I won't get into that today, but the point here is, I have found in my uh, illustrious career trading cryptocurrencies 
Now, usually these markets bottom about six months ahead of time. It's, it's pretty typical, six to eight months ahead of that happening event. And the having, having event will act as a catalyst. You want to see what that looks like? It looks something like that. This was a Litecoin having event. Chris, if you could do me a favor while I'm blabbing away here, can you tell me, uh, just Google search, when was the having event in 2015? I think it was July, August, somewhere in here. And hit the like button and subscribe and ring uh, my bell. Ring my bell. Ring my bell. <laughs> Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like a boss. So where's August? There's August. What date was it specifically? Thank you, Joshua. <laughs> anyway, it's probably somewhere in this area. And the irony of it all is that once the happening event comes, usually the price dumps even further. But what you really have to pay attention to if you are a quote unquote trader is what usually happens is the asset gets bid up about, eh, about a month or two ahead of this happening event. Because guess what? Everybody in the public now actually is paying attention because you know the talking heads in the media actually finally, hey, oh, well, there's a in cryptocurrency news, Litecoin is happening. And oh boy, have you seen it move up? Of course, that's a trap, right? You got to be buying. Sorry? Perfect. So you notice uh, 25th is, oh, wow, look at that, dumped right into that event. <laughs> Anybody who bought ahead of that uh, event, uh, they were actually, and this is a good example, sell the rumor, buy the news. <laughs> anyway, and the irony of it all is, what do you think the odds are that this was a reload zone? I bet pretty good. Oh, look at that. 78.6. There's that Beamish's uh, favorite fib again. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Right on the nose. So, and then also too, actually, I think we could call this a shark setup, couldn't we? Because notice that's the double bottom there. And look at that. Look at that level. If you would just put your order, like actually this is what we call a Wyckoff check. So we'd uh, put on Wyckoff on the uh, screen, nice and big and Franklin and bang. And look at that level. And that was right into the happening event. <laughs> How ironic, eh? <laughs> I bet you when the happening event happened, people were like, oh, are you kidding me? I'm not gonna buy that, it's crashing. They don't even realize they just backed it right up into a into a, a event, right? <laughs> As Shark Toshi says, that's the sex. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, okay, so we were talking about here today. Uh, I, I like this. And I think that this is a situation where you have a, a, a fundamental driver coming up. It will not be, the people will not be talking on this day about SBF. They're going to be talking about Litecoin. And really, my question is, where the hell's Charlie? He's gone awfully quiet these days. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if you start hearing Charlie uh, getting back active in the uh, public again. Anyway, let's see how it goes. So point here is, uh, I mean, you tell me if I go uh, hide all drawing events, boosh. And we'll go to a weekly, well, actually here, uh, let's keep that. Then we'll go to a weekly chart. And this is the easiest sort of way to see what I would consider actually half decent technically uh, good ideas is at least to take a shot. I mean, you can see, here's a good example uh, back here, this last cycle. Market crosses back up off of a big fat weekly W. Eh, it took a bit of a pause, but you can see the moving averages stayed positive. And then you could even argue that probably was some sort of, you know, unfortunately, uh, well, anyway, you can see 61.8 tag there. I don't know whether we got it. We didn't get down there, but that was a funny candle down in there. Eh? Uh, anyway, point here is uh, moving averages cross bullishly in here. I don't really like it when you get this V bottom from new lows and then you get that moving average cross. That's usually a bit of a trap. Uh, I really like to see some sort of solid W here. But anyway, point here is moving average cross, away we go. Notice here today, put away all these funny drawing tools. Hey, look at that, moving average cross, away we go. 
Could we get some sort of FU dump down into these lows? I actually like that idea, believe it or not. Um, so um, I don't mind taking a shot off of this. And considering we've got, um, you know, like bullish bots and trend line breakouts, if I can get a W over here, I'm going to so be buying. Okay, I've talked this thing into the ground. Uh, Bottom line here is this image looks very, very different than what the public is actually thinking. And it makes sense because up top here, I was just so worried and so bearish and so negative and just like, this is a trap and there's no way I can buy up here. And, you know, you guys are all, you're getting rich, Sedona euphoria. Anybody who's been watching my videos, that was kind of a funny anecdote about up top here. And now, ironically enough, we're actually in a window where I think this stuff is actually viable again. Go figure. Eh? Okay, uh, what I was going to do today was uh, address questions. And then there was also a really cool question set that was uh, put in the lounge. And I, um, I uh, went through and tried to answer it as best as I could on a Word document or, you know, um, Word processor document. So maybe that'll help uh, maybe give you a little bit of value here today, sort of what I'm seeing, thinking in the market. Uh, it's not what I want. What did I do with it? It's gotta be one of these. Not that one. Is it over there? No, nope, it's not that over there. It's not that one there. Hmm. Is it this one? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> so, and I'm a little disappointed. We have, we haven't got these uh, these videos, but this one, and actually, I can't wait to put them in the library. That's why I love this library. And uh, and this guy, this guy's so funny to listen to talk, and the way he laughs, this guy's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, go watch this video later on. It's hilarious. But it's such a perfect anecdote. I'll throw it in the YouTube uh, chat there. Such a perfect anecdote of this space. And I'm actually a little bit pretty surprised we haven't seen this stuff. Anyway. Um, okay. Uh, what am I supposed to be doing here? So we have, uh, regularly we have uh, broiler chickens questions. Uh, the school's on Hey, Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Excuse my French. Uh, okay, so I got some questions to answer, and I better get busy here because uh, we also had the Freestyle Friday. I think I got through all these questions. Did I? Yeah, because you can see I wrote out nice. This was the cool trade in that crude oil I was telling you about. Such a good analogy of what we do. So um, this was 78.6, Brian's favorite fib, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this was an interesting horizontal support and resistance level as well. And it was also the midpoint of a very powerful down channel. So that made a really interesting trade location. And then when we drilled down to the lower time frame chart, there is Brian's favorite 78.6. Um, and then when we drilled down to even a lower time frame chart, there was the most beautiful little W right down in there uh, to show you. So it just goes to show this is day trading crude oil. Um, and uh, really all the concepts are exactly the same. Anyway, so we have that document floating around. I think Chris is though, he said he's going to uh, merge all this into a brand new document for 2023. And if anything, I like that. Let's make a fresh start, new year. Let's kiss this damn 22 year goodbye. Get it off the screen. <laughs> so we also have the broiled chickens questions. Uh, so it does turn out there are four questions here. So somebody was in the lounge, if you have a question, um, uh, pop it over here and I'll get to it. And then, as I said, um, there was somebody who came on the lounge and sort of said, Hey, I'm a brand new person. Got a bunch of questions that I'd really like answered. Uh, can you go through them? And I actually did up sort of a preface just so you really understand exactly what it is you're getting involved in here. Um, and then, um, I actually went through and answered the questions one by one by one. I posted this uh, document for you and your name specifically, if you're watching this later on, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you did, but I hadn't seen it. It was, uh, where is that person? 
Here we are. Uh, Sulja, Sulja. Anyway, uh, if you look in the uh, wow, fifty-three uh, reply. <laughs> I suppose that's also part of my um, my answer because I did put a bunch of people. Yeah, so I did uh, Sulja. I did directly answer to you, but I also put the link to this document in your question there. So. This I actually did for you this morning. So that's actually why I'm late on the video here today is I spent a lot of time answering these questions. So I do have to get out of here at one o'clock. So we got basically about an hour to work with. Uh, the interesting thing is you probably hear it in my voice. I'm actually a little bit more optimistic. I mean, thank God we're out of this damn uh, 2022. That was just a nightmare. And I gotta say, I'm optimistic. Here we are, we're finally in the bottoming year. And I firmly believe, firmly, quite firmly, um, like the Litecoin, I mean, we're now, they've completely washed the market out. You can't say that there is any fluff left in this market. When they bring it right back down to the bottom, all the kids are wiped out. And as I said, you want to see what the actual public is thinking. Keep in mind, we're contrarians by trade. This is what the public's thinking. And they're they're angry, they're bitter. This guy's openly fuing SBF. This video is getting lots of hits and probably a whole bunch of likes and stuff. I think this is an excellent analogy of what the public is thinking right now. And probably over the next four or five months, it's only going to get worse. The irony of it all, of course, Litecoin will very quietly go about its rally. Then the public will come in at the end of the move, right? And that was uh, probably off of here. Well, no, actually, that, that's this one here, right? The public will come in at the end, and then we're going to start having all those funny stories about, you know, Hitler, you know, chasing the Ponzi. And the cool part about this is that this was actually a Chinese Ponzi. So, you know, in the tweet that I put out, I even said, I can already hear the Chinese Ponzi coming. So you want to really learn about Bitcoin, you want to really learn about crypto, you want to really learn about trading, you want to really learn about capitalism, do yourself a favor and go do a little bit of research about how uh, this Litecoin happening event played itself out, how there was a huge Chinese, Chinese Ponzi through this. And then ironically enough, coming out the backside, like we said, <laughs> we had a lot of the public was trapped and a lot of the public got burned because they chased and they were Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and probably a good lesson for all of you, don't be Adolf Hitler, right? Hitler versus Litecoin. You don't wanna be this guy, right? So learn how to play this game correctly and don't be a Hitler. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a somebody grabbed that sound bite, eh? <laughs> Learn to play this game correctly, and you don't need to be a Hitler. <laughs> and that's the irony of it all. Oh, well, no, okay. <laughs> let's finish that good train of thought. Okay, so let's attack these broiler chickens questions. Then we'll uh, jump. Well, actually, we don't need to do the free for all Friday. We can put that away now. Uh, should also remind you that we do have a raffle coming up for the level one program. Every term I like to give away a seat and actually our TRI secret options formula uh, quarterback, um, who I think is an excellent trader unto himself. He actually won our very first contest years and years and years ago, uh, David. And uh, really David, David's set for life. Uh, he's got a skill set now to serve him He's a pretty young guy, I think, and uh, he's got a nice uh, operating business. <laughs> he's good to go. So be a David. Don't be a Hitler. Be a David. <laughs> Sorry, David, if adding Hitler in your name in the same sentence is <laughs> taboo. Anyway, point here is we do have a raffle coming up here. Uh, so get your butt on this uh it's a it's the waitlist document. It's probably the easiest way to for us to figure out sort of how we can sort of juxtapose the two together. If you are interested in winning the raffle, um, I don't know whether Chris put it uh, on the site. Um, well, well, I'll post it on the uh, YouTube page. I don't know whether um, whether uh, Rares is going to. Uh, 
to do it up in the description. Maybe Chris, could you grab that that um, that link and maybe throw it into the description of this YouTube video? The link is already in the description at the bottom and uh, should be found there. There you go. Boom in your face, Brian. <laughs> so uh, do yourself a favor. I mean, sign up. Hey, you might win a seat. Might just change your life. And we've changed a lot of people's lives for the better. Uh, I would say that the, the price that we charge for this level one course is ridiculous. I mean, we're giving this away. But uh, in the, I, I have anything, I, I'm not here to shill the program. The program shills itself. Uh, if you want to learn more about the program, just go to this website and listen to all the people's testimonies. Uh, never had a single person ask for their money back. You know, I've had some people that said, you know, uh, maybe you could do a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one. but for the price that we charge uh, for this program, uh, I think the program is perfect. And I think your level one instructor, Grim, is just awesome. And the cool part about it is, you know, if you want to take your training to the next level, uh, you know, that conversation that we had on the free for all Friday about the uh, advanced uh, concepts in the level two program to help your day trading, just uh, the level two program is just a beautiful dovetail that just leads off exactly where level one finishes. Um, and, you know, the candy store, all the different technical tools and, you know, ways of looking at the market and understanding price action. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. We could do level four, five and six. And actually, our level three instructor right now is actually working on a level four spreads module. Shh, shouldn't have said anything about that. <laughs> so, you know, uh, there will be an open invite uh, for you if Zach does actually want to go through with it uh, to, uh, to uh, take a dovetail program. Anybody who was interested in options, Zach absolutely loves his spread trades along with Joe Z. And... Um, uh, he's very interested in talking spreads uh, to the community. So he's already getting a level uh, four going. And then, of course, you know, there's plenty of material if I wanted to do another level four or uh, level five, I guess. <laughs> but for the time being, uh, let's just get you pointed in a good direction. And actually, this speaks to uh, this person, Noob's question. So let's see if we can get to that. I've got one hour to get through these questions. So let's uh, get to work. OK, number one. Now let's get that 2022 off the screen. That just is insulting. Uh, let's put a uh, let's put a page break in there, uh, and we're going to do a new document uh, for 2023 anyway, right? Yeah. Anyway, so I'll put a, a page break in here because I don't. Uh, we're in Benner's uh, cycle uh, bottom year. I want to start the year off well, full of optimism. Get that 22 out of here. <laughs> okay now how can i put in a page break insert break it should be in here somewhere where the hell is it <laughs> oh well i'll just hit enter all right number one can you elaborate on why an inverted yield curve means that financial services are guaranteed to lose money by doing business all right it's pretty straightforward um, the way that our financial system is set up, uh, and uh, stockcharts.com, I think, does the, the best job out there of uh, sort of visualizing this yield curve concept. So uh, congratulations. Uh, very few places have been able to put this tool together. Uh, but the way that our current, and actually it's really interesting as sort of an aside to this, is uh, don't be out of Hitler buying Litecoin at the top of the market. What? No, no, no. Shut up, Ryan. Right. <laughs> don't be bitter like these guys. All right. Yeah, shut up, Ryan. Right. Okay, let's get on with it. Here's <laughs> uh, the best thing to show you this over here. Here. This lady here, who I think is very, very smart. Uh, Caitlin Long, I think her name is, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she's actually, uh, yeah, this video. Do yourself a favor and watch this video. She's so um, I'm not quite sure this gentleman. Uh, I, I hope he's a, a good resource for you. I, I'm not really commenting on him. I'm commenting on her. She's, she's sharp as a whip. 
And she's actually starting her own bank in the crypto industry. So you can tell she wants to be a player. Um, and she actually, believe it or not, she answers your question a lot better than I ever could because she sort of answers it in a very um, banker-esque, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm a professor of economics at Stanford University kind of answer. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you this sort of gnarly old uh, pit trader answer. I might get the term or two wrong, but I think on balance, uh, I'll, I'll be able to answer it for you. But she'll definitely give you a much more crisp answer that just nails it. So just go watch this video. It's worth investing an hour of your time because basically what she's saying is, this model of our economy and our society is broken. Uh, it is the legacy system, and it's actually what cryptocurrency is actually trying to put out of business, which is fascinating. So the premise goes something along these lines. Um, if you are a financial institution, people come to you with short-term deposits or like deposits, you know, especially like a bank. Yeah, I want to put my money in a bank and I want to collect T-bill rates, right? Um, banks, you know, like it, the way it works in a hierarchy. So T-bills will be the lowest rate. Then just up above that's what they call banker's acceptance. Then just what's up above that's like corporate paper, which technically is banker's acceptance, but a little bit less grade, like, you know, GMAC, Ford Motor Credit, that kind of stuff. And it just, it's a food chain and it just moves down the food chain. And as your credit quality gets worse and worse and worse, you have to pay a higher and higher rate. But think of it simply enough that all we're looking at here is just government yields. So if we think that the depositors are going to come in, deposit their money, and of course they want to be able to take their money out. So um the, uh, the bank itself will actually go to the government and it will actually either buy those uh, short-term debt instruments, the T-bills, um, if they have excess cash sitting around the books. But really, more importantly, what do financial institutions actually do with those customer deposits? And the answer is, they go and lend the money out to other people, uh, consumers. And the easiest way for you to think about that is your home mortgage. Right? It's really straightforward. And usually, I mean, you know, in this historically low uh, long-term interest rate environment and even short-term interest rates for that matter, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's a bit reluctant. The banks don't really want to lend out on the long end of the curve, but, We've gone back into the environment where long rates are uh, relatively high again. So the banks are very comfortable lending out lots and lots of money on the long end of the curve again. But the point here is that if a customer wanted to withdraw their money, because remember they deposited in the bank and the bank turns around and lends it out at 20 year uh, rates, those long rates, what are they going to do if a customer's like, oh, well, you know what? I gave you $5,000 and I want to withdraw it and I want to go buy a nice, uh, well, I don't know, nice used car for my kid because he's going off to college or something like that. The bank's got to come up with that $5,000. So what do they do? And the bank, literally, the way that they play this game is that they will lend out on the long end of the curve almost exactly the same amount of money that they're going to borrow on the short end of the curve. So they always have money. So if Mr. Customer wants to come and, and, and withdraw, um, they always have money on the books to meet those withdrawals. This is basically the banker's business model, lending out to the public on the long end, and they go in on the short end and they borrow uh, to meet obligations. Now, you know, through the financial crisis, they even reduced the reserve requirements. They had at one point through the insanity there where they said, well, there are no reserve requirements. Lend as much as you want. I mean, it's just absolute chaos. And of course, unfortunately, it is that chaos that is the long-term 
uh, cycle pivot. That's what caused interest rates to finally stop going down and to start going up is that these governments just went absolutely stupid. And thank you, governments. All of our collective standard of livings have absolutely gotten destroyed through this. Substitute drama teachers don't make good e economists. We're living the, the proof of that. Anyway, point of the matter here is, if I'm a financial institution and I've lent out to you Joe Sixpack here, and I have to go to the Fed and borrow money to meet those short-term withdrawal obligations, or maybe even to meet those short-term reserve requirement obligations, I'm going to lose money. I'm lending out to you and collecting maybe four, four and a half percent. I'm going to the Fed and just you even see here, I'm almost paying almost 4.65%. I'm guaranteed to lose money. I don't have any choice. And if anything, this is exactly how the Fed uses the yield curve to try and slow things down. So through the dot-com boom, we got a situation where you see on the longer end, the uh, interest rates were shorter than the, uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Long-term interest rates were lower than the short end of the curve. And what came next? The whole economy starts cr crumbling. And as the economy is crumbling, the Fed sees that, okay, we've killed the bull. Uh, the inflationary pressures on the economy are abating. And oh my God, everybody's losing their jobs and everybody's money's tight. And you notice they bring short-term interest rates back down. When they literally want to guarantee that the market will go up, they make it so that financial institutions who lend out to the public on the long end and borrow at the short end, they are now guaranteed to make money. So which way does the market go? You know, you notice through this, it's a little bit tenuous, but on balance, as time goes by and those profits start to accumulate and they just keep accumulating, Notice stock prices start going back up. Then we get overdone again. And uh-oh, you see they're taking short-term interest rates back up. Even at this point, I'm lending out to the public at this rate, but I'm borrowing at this rate. That's flat. I'm not making any money at all. Then you notice, where is it? I think it's somewhere in here. There we go. Uh, actually, in this particular case, now you can see inverted. So they've actually taken interest rates to the point where they're higher on the short end than the longer end. So what should you expect? Uh oh, here it comes. Boom, down goes the economy. And notice by time they've slowed things down, the inflation pressure slowed down. They've taken interest rates back down to normal. Now, the financial institutions that lend out on the long end and borrow on the short end, now they're guaranteed to make money. They have no choice. And which way does the stock market go? It goes booming up to the point where, you know, the Fed start getting worried about rates and all that kind of fun stuff. This was the interesting uh, environment where Donald Trump said that he thought short-term interest rates were too high. Right there, right there is the very end of 2019. This is where Trump tried to get uh, Powell to uh, lower interest rates. But you know, if you understand this as a yield curve, there's no reason for the Fed to to uh, step on uh, to uh, take their uh, foot off the pedal. That that financial institution is still guaranteed to make money here. Nothing wrong with this at all. It's just business as usual. Then we had the health crisis. And boom, the Fed took interest rates to absolutely nothing because they freaked out. For lack of a better term, they freaked out. Should we debate mortgage in our future? Shut the fuck up. Give the guys, 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 give them the money. <laughs> well, they freaked out. They lost all sort of professionalism. They just took interest rates to zero. You heard fucking granny there uh, in front of the Congress. Invest, invest, spend, spend, spend and they just way overdid it. And now the interesting thing, and, and there was a lot of economic data sets that came out through this, where there were like market participants going, what the fuck are you people doing? You've completely screwed the economy up. If you look at retail sales of Mr. Druckenmiller, that's your lesson. Mr. Druckenmiller is one smart ass mofo. 
<laughs> Sorry, BT. Anyway, point of the matter here is eventually these stupid banksters, and frankly speaking, I think it was all intentional. Klaus's great reset. Oh, don't let a good opportunity go to waste to screw the public over. Right. And then substitute drama teachers going, you know, oh, I know what the future is. I trust me, I'll be able to handle everything. And again, like I said, I think the Rothschilds just played my prime minister like a fiddle. Anyway, point of the matter here is eventually the Fedsters went, oh, you know, I think you're right. We did screw up. Oh, we better correct things quickly. And I mean, this is not a very long period of time. Look how we've gone from absolutely nothing in a relatively healthy economy. And then all of a sudden, boom, inverted. So to try and make up for their horrific disaster, and remember, the Fed always does this. And it's, it's so tragic because quite literally, like I said, Mr. Druckenmiller, he's made a career out of just seeing that the Fed has gone way too far, way too hard, way too often. He took advantage of it. And of course, he went long, like uber long, uh, everything and made a fortune, you know, and this is where your Bitcoin went to the moon and all that, right? Unfortunately, there were people that actually, they kind of believe their own bullshit, you know, like that sailor guy. There's an old expression in the market and it's really simple. Don't fight the Fed. So when the Fed goes on this massive binge of raising interest rates, and I'll just watch, watch how this goes up so quickly. This is the Fed going absolutely nuts. Watch that short end of the curve. Wow, geez, what's going on here? And look at that curve. It's inverted now. So now if we just do the math, remember the Fed is trying to slow the economy down. How do they do it? Now, any financial institution that's lending to the public out here and has to go to the Fed on the short term to meet those short term deposits and reserve requirements, they're borrowing here. They are guaranteed to lose money. What happened here? Boom. <laughs> what happened? Uh, where is it? And so there we are. What happened here? Boom. Now, you can bury your head in the sand. You can, if you want to. It's fine. But I would say that if you are fighting the Fed right now, you are just asking for trouble. And as it is right now, financial institutions are absolutely guaranteed to lose money in this scenario. So... Hope that helps answer that question. Uh, Ian, if you are watching, let me know whether that answered it or not. All right, number two, Brian. Martin again from level one. I'm looking to get funded with what I learned in level one. However, I'm facing with Forex based firms. Wow, this is dangerous, Martin. I don't like trading Forex. I don't like Forex firms. I don't like CFDs. It's basically the odds are stacked against you. So I don't really think that's in your best interest. Uh, I do like the classic commodity um, sort of prop firm angle. That would be my recommendation. Uh, the only key that I find with them is that, you know, it's going to cost a bit of money to get funded because they actually make you pay to stay in their training programs. And I've always said, if you ever have to pay for a job, then uh, it's not a good idea. So be careful if they're, you know, uh, Saying, yeah, we, you know, we'll fund you, but you got to go into this uh, education program, stuff like that. That's dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Um, Forex also, too. The worst part about Forex and CFD firms is they can stop you out of positions and the price of the asset never even has to trade at that level. It's horribly unethical. It is the hallmark of, um, um, what do you call it? unregulated businesses. Keep in mind, Forex was never built for the public. 
public really has no business being in Forex, but you know, the public saw that the banksters were trading this Forex market, demanded that they be let in. The banksters said, this is unregulated. It's just a network of our trading desks. Uh, you really don't want to be here, but the public was like, oh no, 1%, 1%, it's all a scam, it's all a scam, let us in. And the banksters went, all right, you want to come in? Remember, there's no stops. Technically, there is no last trade in Forex. Uh, it's just a bid-ass spread. I mean, that's it. That's what Forex is. So extremely dangerous stuff, extremely dangerous would you say level one stuff works on Forex and on the same time frame, like five or 15 minute charts for Forex? Well, just what I explained to you, there's a lot of reasons why uh, trading off of these lower time frame charts on Forex markets is a potion for disaster. And Lee there says spreads are rough sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> now, are you talking about spread trades or are you talking about spreads between the bid and offer? <laughs> But anyway, so the point here is, I, if anything, what I would say to you is you almost want to build a plan where, you know, like uh, in our classic sort of commodities trading, we would say, you know, try and find W's. Uh, you want to buy the W and you want to stop below here. Now, if you're going to trade uh, Forex, I would add another 5% or so and have your stop like well below this level because they're going to bring this market down and they're going to fish around here. And like I said, you might have your stop just below here. The market never even goes through that low and they can still stop you out. It's very, very cheeky. Uh, I would say on balance on the higher time frame charts, like if you have like daily or even four hour W's and those kind of things, kind of like this image. Uh, actually, you know, this image is very similar to sort of Forex. You might even want to, and it's a bit cheeky, but uh, Hogue used to always tell us this. And frankly speaking, I think it's a good idea. You might even set up your plan where you're like, okay, I can see that that's a liquidity pool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a plan. Yes, I like this W here and I really wanna buy that W. And yeah, you know, there's 78.6 right there. That's really where I wanna try and hunt for a turn. But I know how unscrupulous these guys are. So I'm gonna set a plan that simply says, I'm gonna wait for the FU move and then I'm gonna hunt my setup. Uh, and interestingly enough, I mean, this isn't Forex, but you see a lot of Forex markets look a lot like this. You know, let's just randomly pick one. Um, let's go GBPEUR. There's a nice random. Uh, I think you can do this in Forex, can't you? Spread EX, well, that sounds very Forexy. We used to have a whole bunch of them. Uh, Forex. Oh, not interesting. Not many. Anyway. Oh, Saxo. I know uh, Raf, he likes to use this thing. All right. So let's go down to your uh, nine minute chart. All right. Here's a good example. So it kind of like, you know, I really like this level down here. And notice they even did it a couple of times, right? So there's nine minute chart. So what I would suggest you do, and Craig, who is sort of our day trading room expert, uh, he sort of is quarterback of the day trader room. He actually has a setup that he's developed. We call it the SFU. And you can kind of see, look at, they did it repeatedly. So you actually hunt your long right down in here on this stop run. You're looking specifically for this stop run. So this actually becomes a trade location. And if he can find on a nine minute chart, a potential bull div, he's all over that. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to show you, what does that look like? Oh yeah, so here's a good example. So this is a setup right here that I think Craig would probably take every day of the week. You can kind of see how RSI is Wing out. You can see Willie's nice and stupid. You know, Willie here, uh, minus uh, 97.3, over here, 94, 95. That's not the best. Let's see, 29.3. Actually, there's a good example. So we made a lower low in price if we just use the RSI. 
I probably wouldn't use Willie to find the divs here. I'd just use him as an overbought oversold zone. So if we go like that, and then we go like that, we go like that. Uh, okay, so you can see it. All right, there's your bull div right there to there. And you're actually looking for this triggering of this low as your trade location. And that actually produced a half decent trade. And then you can see they did it again. So again, we have higher low on RSI and the RSI divs already confirmed and they did it again. So you can see, take a screenshot of this, whoever asked this question. In fact, I'll even put it in the document for you. If you can build a trading plan that says that the lows is actually my trade location, and I'm going to use uh, something like RSI divs to validate that this is an okay trade level. You're going to do something like go uh, long and you're going to have to set a fixed amount of ticks that you're willing to risk. Something like, I don't know, let's say, uh, actually, you're probably the best one is to go like, uh, like and actually, geez, I got to get going here. I answered one question. So let's say you, you know, said, well, I can risk 53 ticks, whatever that comes out to. And then you want to set stops at like two to one, uh, something along those lines. Um, you're going to buy that break as long as we have a confirmed bull div, which we do. You're going to sell half at two to one, stop at scratch on remaining, and woohoo, there you go. I would say this is more like level two. Uh, because we do horizontal support and resistance module in the level two. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, like five minute charts, remember I showed you the crude oil example on Friday. I mean, you can hunt that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. What I worry about in Forex, when you said like five minute chart, 15 minute chart, uh, you're really trying to thin, thread the needle. And unfortunately in the CFB and the Forex business, they, they don't even have to trade. Like in this example right here, you can see the market's coming down here. You might even, and this is, you know, it's unregulated space. So these bastards, they, I've seen it like countless times. Um, they, you know, there might not be any orders in their order book. And it all depends on how big your CFD firm is. And, or maybe you even bought that level there, right? Uh, down in there and the market's coming down into here and they will stop you out here and there'll be no trades here. And it's just like, what the fuck? So that's why if you're gonna trade the Forex kind of market, I think the uh, SFU trade is, is the way to go. And it's, it's, you know, it's advanced. I'm not gonna say it's super easy. Now, you know, here's a nine minute chart. There's no reason why you couldn't be like looking at that, looking at that high. We rallied into a reload zone and you just simply say, look at, I'm going to risk against this high. My stop will be way up here and I'm gonna take this short. Uh, and it's this inside bar fail. But my stop, because it's Forex, I don't wanna have my stop right up here because they can stop me out really easily. I'm gonna have it above this high. And of course, two to one risk reward. Do you think that was an accident, that trade? I think actually that accident was very manufactured. So if you can, you know, what I would say, if you're gonna do the Forex route is go, you know, work on the SFU setup, but that's more like level two. If you're gonna use the level one concepts, you know, maybe hunt for a trade setup in this area, but you gotta risk against a few highs so that your stops way up here and the CFD firm, Forex guys, they can't fuck you by, you know, if you have your stop above this high, then there's gonna be some liquidity ahead of you up here. So I don't know, I hope that helps. I wouldn't recommend a uh, five minute trading on a, on a Forex site. That to me has got potion for disaster written all over it. But having said that, hopefully that gave you a pretty candid answer. So uh, I'll give you, uh, you know, actually, I don't mind this. This actually isn't a bad illustration. I'll uh, give you that as uh, something to chew on. I just I randomly picked an asset there for you. So I think uh, hopefully that helps you. So there's two different ways that I would trade. I, You know, the point being that, you know, if this was an M on this inside bar, 
what I would say is uh, if it's an M, then okay. You know, you could risk against the second high, but if like this inside bar, I would not put my stop just above here in a Forex uh, CFD firm. You're gonna, you're asking for trouble. All right, hope that helps. Um, I do actually, you know, like honestly, in Forex, the best strategy is this FU setup. It just works so beautifully. It's just, it takes practice. And I think it probably took Craig about a year or two to get really good at his setup. Uh, and even then, you know, there's no guarantees for management, right? You might've had your short here and you know, the exact reverse. Remember we said, well, I can risk exactly 54 ticks. Then you find, you know, this trade, uh, it worked beautifully, right? You never had to worry, but in this one, boom, maybe that's exactly 54 ticks. And then you go, ah, oh, it's all a scam, the bastards. So notice here, uh, yeah, I mean, the irony of it all is I actually don't really mind. See, here's a good example, right? Where there's that inside bar there. If I risked against here, that's probably exactly why that spikes so much is there were a lot of stop loss orders just above here. And that's what caused that big pop there. Um, anyway, uh, if I didn't help answer your question, uh, ask again and be active on the site, right? I'll be more than happy to work with you through the uh, trading week. Keep in mind, we do have day trading rooms and stuff. Uh, coming out of the level one program, of course, you're supposed to just understand the basics. And of course, you know, actually one of the questions that uh, one of the questions that this person asked, you know, uh, how long is it going to take for me to become a trader, right? And I was like, you know, one of the things you must understand, and I believe this, is um, uh, there's an old expression that an old uh, employer told me is that you never really understand a job completely until you've done the job for one full year. So if you've done this for 12 weeks and you've learned the level one program, um, my suggestion to you is you've got now about 30 weeks of getting in the trenches and just taking setups before you really understand what this job is. I like the idea of you taking the level one, the level two, even the level three, if you're interested in a very advanced trading. And of course, that's where we get into the day trading a lot and options and derivatives and stuff. Um, take the year, take a full year uh, to really vet this out before you actually start saying, okay, this is my profession, this is my career. Uh, 12 weeks, you'll understand the basics. You could probably do things like little old lady plans uh, pretty effectively. And you see Paul, you know, the interesting thing is Paul learned everything that he had that our, our uh, Wednesday show co-host. He learned everything that he liked and he needed to know to be a day trader. But he said he was on the site for about two or three years. So, um, yeah, I I, you know, if you're going to go this route, what I would say is take a good maybe couple months, figure out a setup that you like. If you want to do L Tangonators, fine. And just paper trade the crap out of it, you know, 100 trades. Then you want to go on your Forex site, do like one tenth account size trades. Maybe just throw like, because it's a Forex firm, throw a thousand bucks into an account and just say, all right, I'm going to follow the rules. No single trades, more than 5% risk. And really for day traders, I really like Paul's approach. Uh, no trades greater than 1% risk. And actually we even did the math here uh, for somebody, but we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, 1% risk, 10 trades in a week. Yeah, no, it's not a bad, not a bad living. But uh, it's a bit of work. Don't get me wrong. Especially if you're thinking about five, 15 minute uh, charts. Oh boy, you're going to be busy. I think as I showed uh, earlier, what I would prefer you do is pull up like a four hour chart, maybe a two hour chart, that kind of thing. Find trade location and then just wait patiently and maybe only take like one or two trades in a week and just wait patiently for the market to come into that trade location and then drill down to your lower time frame charts and hunt the setups that, that I teach you on the site. That, that's what that, I guess that would also be a suggestion for you. Okay, number four. Hi, Brian. What did you mean by uh, I can already hear the... <laughs> well, Francis Z, are you here? 
Uh, I don't know whether you're, oh yeah, so there you go. They got uh, a swing combine at top step. So there you go. You are allowed to take that little bit higher time frame trades. And frankly speaking, given the amount of money that you have to risk on a daily trade basis, because you can't do the micro charts, I actually think probably swing trading is probably a better approach on uh, top step, to be honest with you, considering the amount of money that you have to risk on those big uh, contracts. All right. Um, so the point here is that, uh, uh, as I showed you off of the site, um, right, this kind of stuff. I mean, this happens every bloody cycle. It's always the same. And the thing is, of course, this is after the fact, right? Don't be Hitler. But the irony of it all is that through that whole event, why did Litecoin go as crazy as it did? I mean, that was a pretty big rally. Uh, so we got to get off the air all this stuff. Put that all oh, actually, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's put all that over And then let's go uh, LTC USD, and it was on Phoenix, right? Uh, over here. Uh, I think all this stuff should still be here. Let's see. Is there anything? Yeah, there we are. So, and the irony of it all is this wasn't a very long time window. Uh, but the whole point was that there was a happening event coming up, and there was a Ponzi scheme out of China. Uh, and of course, as soon as the market broke, that's when you found out about the Ponzi scheme. But the stupid thing is that the guys in China, they didn't know about this happening event kind of stuff, or maybe they did. They were just too arrogant. Uh, and they, you know, they should have gotten completely out. Uh, and this is often what happens is I think that they had expected this thing to keep rallying right into the happening event. But what usually happens is that this thing just, it gets too far. You can only stretch the rubber band so far. And actually, there's a really cool tool that I built to try and help uh, sort of identify when you should look at something and say, you know, if I haven't sold half on a double by now, I better, you know, just cool my jets. And uh, that is uh, this uh, Willie indicator. So when Willie gets stupid about overbought, and that's this yellow line gets above minus 20 here when you see this number here, if it gets above minus 20, you see it happened right there. At this point here, you cannot buy this asset anymore. You can't touch it. Usually, this is when these assets go absolutely apeshit crazy like this. But notice, after the fact, if you had bought anywhere up here and just held, you were underwater. And you were probably cursing my name. You bought anywhere here, and you'd think I was a total croc. So the point here is that uh, this is specifically why this indicator I built it. And you can make the argument... Would it have been a good idea to be a seller down here? This is where Willie got below minus 80. So Willie is stupidly oversold. Would it have been a good idea to be a seller here? No. So point of the matter here is the specifically to answer your question, this was all a Chinese Ponzi. And they probably took the price way, way, way too far. But remember, this is capitalism. And this is an unregulated market space. Are they likely to overdo it again? Uh, I believe so. I mean, look at that chart. Jesus, this thing's getting ready to go apeshit here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, anyway, sure hope we get an opportunity to go and buy some more. All right, so I hope that I'll answer that question. Uh, uh, okay, number five, Brian, as a level one student per one of the first things that was insisted for level one students, put your wallet away. So for those of us who stick to that rule, what would you say when you see these opportunities that you go over on the DB, Crypto 100 and BCS? I'm always very conflicted to take the trade or shot at the opportunities, but it's contrary to my plan. What is your guidance in these situations? Well, that's, you know what? If anything, I like the fact that you you are literally going through what every single professional investor does, is you're trying to figure out what speaks to you as an individual. And you're listening to some loudmouth, opinionated, cocksucking son of a bitch going, oh, look at that 
thing. That's a buy. Oh, look at that. That's a sell. Oh, that's a buy. Oh, that's a sell. Oh, that's a buy. And you're sitting there going, huh, what the hell do I do? <laughs> and my apologies for laughing at you. Um, what you should do is you should, at this point, especially with the level one, is you should have one trend ranging setup, the El Dangonador, and one um, uh, trend following setup, the bot. Those are sort of the two, uh, you know, I, we, how do you say this? We want you to come out of the level one program at least having some sort of fun foundation to start building your trading career off of. The issue here is that there is a million different ways to skin this cat. And there's not really like a righter or wronger way to do this. General principles you learn in the level one program, try and uh, take a risk first approach. If this trade goes wrong, what am I looking at? How bad does bad hurt? Absolutely, that is absolutely where you have to start from. Number two, is this a half decent location to actually take that risk? El Tangonator, of course, you're forced to come in and try and consider buying at the bottom end of ranges, reload zones, right? Uh, or selling at the top of ranges. Um, is there indications from the marketplace that maybe this asset's stronger or weaker than what price is telling me? That's the concept of divergence. Well, then finally, do I have some sort of price structure to work with to justify me actually taking a risk? I'm going to buy at this level because of this candlestick pattern that's proven over time that it's right or more than it's wronger. This price structure, W's, inverted head and shoulders, right? Those kind of conversations, uh, you know, uh, triangles. Um, Point being, uh, there should be a methodology to why you take a risk in the marketplace. And you're now going through that process of trying to figure out what it is that speaks to you as an individual. Um, as I had sort of said earlier, I don't think you really learn this job unless you've done it for a full year. So. You know, like uh, this uh, question, you know, noobs coming to the site and um, and saying, oh, hey, Brian, I saw your YouTube video and uh, hey, it sounds like I can get rich next week. Uh, I uh, just lost my job. I got a thousand bucks left in my pocket. Should I blow it on your course and I'm going to be a millionaire by the end of next week? <laughs> no. <laughs> if anything, unfortunately, what I'm trying to teach you here is actually a profession. And that means that you might be here for quite a while learning the profession. How long does it take for a doctor to learn how to actually conduct a, an appropriate surgery? I mean, it probably takes months, if not years, just to what are the proper steps to take when cutting a human being open <laughs> and expecting them to live? Uh, what are the proper steps to take when you are defending somebody in a court of law? There is definitely a process involved. What are the proper steps involved in fixing a leaky gasket on a 1985 BMW 320i? 318, I don't know. Anyway, there's definitely a process involved. Well, running a business of trading is the same damn thing. You've got to get to the point where you can almost do the process in your sleep. <laughs> and half the time, Chris wakes me up at 4.45 in the morning to trade gold on the ORT. I am half asleep. <laughs> so I better know how to do this process. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's a funny joke. Anyway, the point here is uh, you are actually sort of midstream. And there's nothing wrong with that, Sean. 
the you know for a thousand bucks we're going to teach you number one the basics of the process we're going to teach you all the different tools that you need things like i gotta have a trading plan what should be in the trading plan uh i gotta identify who i am what kind of risk taker i am and all that kind of fun stuff um if I am considering being a day trader, okay, well, you know, what kind of time frame, what assets am I interested in? You know, uh, this person up here is trying to figure out whether Forex trading is really for them or not. Um, I like the idea, especially if you've never done this before and you're brand spanking new to say, look at, I can't even take my wallet out of my pocket until I've done 100 paper trades. If you work really, really slowly, that might take you a couple of years, it might take you a few years. There's no stopwatch on it. I will say that if you can stick around for one full year, you get a pretty good idea about how this sort of seasonal trade works. And the funny thing is, is it's really as simple as buy when it snows, sell when it goes. So what's happening outside? Is it snowing? Has it start? Is it just recently started to snow, or are we coming to the end of the season? Is it is the snow going? You know, that's that's the easiest way for you to understand seasonality. Cool part about it in venture capital, it works really well as well. So what I would suggest is right now, you know what you should be doing, Sean, is you should be simply paper trading everything and after a while you might go you know brian i've taken the past 10 of your damn trades and they've all not worked uh maybe you should shut the fuck up <laughs> you're done <laughs> i mean i hope that's not the case but it might be and if anything going through that process you are going to understand the process that's the key to this is you actually, you know, my desire is to have every single one of these students that I teach actually become a better trader than me. And the way that you do that is learning the process. And right now, and if you can tell me, yes, Brian, I've done one my 100 paper trades. And frankly speaking, I really like this setup versus that setup. That's exactly what I want to hear. Coming out of the level one program, remember, you're just, you're given the basics of range trades, trending trades. You see on Wednesday shows, Paul is very effectively running his small business trading using those two particular approaches. Nothing wrong with that at all. It works. But you have to get to the point where you're like, yeah, Brian, I hear you blabbing away in the daily brief, but I don't have a valid bot set up yet. I have to wait for the criteria. Once you broke, what does that mean, once you broke? Yeah, I mean, that's the iron is, as the matador says, you have to take so many trades that you actually have to get to the point where you're like, yep, I can see what you're talking about, Brian, makes sense to me. Or... I don't know, Brian, I think you're actually a bit early here. Maybe we should wait for a W on the other side of the trend line, because isn't that the rule? <laughs> and if you get to that point, then I know you're made. Hey, and the, the thing is, you can't put a stopwatch on this. I think, honestly, uh, you know, one business partner that I work with, it has literally taken him about five or six years for him to get to that point. But the only way you do it is you've got to log the trades. You've got to log. You've got to put the miles in. That's why we say 100 paper trades. I mean, my rule, and this is, you know, if you fancy yourself, look at Brian, I know the process. I can manage myself. Well, my, my suggestion is that uh, you do, you know, and there's a very, this is for somebody who actually knows the process. This is the life that you live. And I need to get you to this point where you are going through this sort of self reevaluation process on your own. I don't have to sit here uh, and, and hold your hand. 
And really what I would suggest is, is I think I pointed out in here, if you are at the point where you're not making mistakes, keep in mind, most new people, they have a problem with behavior. And so you got to tackle yourself. If you can get to the point where like, I'm not making any behavioral mistakes, I'm trading the setups, some are working, some aren't, and I'm just logging the data and I'm totally emotionless about this. Great, awesome. If you are at that point, then I would actually say that uh, you are now uh, kind of like this person. That means if you are at that point, then I like this approach. Any particular setup, somebody shows you a setup and you're kind of like, oh, that's cool. I've never used RSI breakouts like that. Let's give it a whirl. Build the plan vet the criteria. This has to happen. This has to happen. This has to happen. I take the trade here. I risk to here. My profit objective is this. I live with the results. And then you want to do 20 paper trades. Then the next stage, and this is, this is debatable by some people, but I like this because frankly speaking, I don't have much respect for anybody in the marketplace that can't do paper trading. Because what that tells me is that you cannot control yourself. You have to be able to, there's an old expression, if you can't trade small, you got no business trading big. So, you know, there are ways to approach investing. Somebody over there is going, you got to buy a Litecoin, Litecoin right now. You know, I mean, the bottom line here is if you want to make it really simple, build a little old lady investment plan where you're going to take less than 5% of the money that you're working with, put it into Litecoin, say, just say consciously, you know, if it goes to zero, it goes to zero. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm talking more like, you know, day traders. I want to be a day trader, trying to forex and all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, I, we don't have a lot of time here left. So I'm just going to simply say I like this approach. Now, once you get to the point where you can show me 20 paper trades and you're not making any mistakes and you're not uh, screwing up and you see the desired results, well, then you can move on to actually risking uh, money. And I like the idea of taking one tenth of whatever your stake is. If you got like 5,000 bucks to work with, take $500 of that and then run the plan off of $500. And if you see the same results, and actually Paul likes this, he uh, he has uh, when when he uh, has people join his community, uh, I think he says uh, he likes to put them on a one hundred dollar trading plan. So you take a hundred bucks, and you can't risk more than one percent on a trade. So that means you're risking a grand total of one dollar on a trade. If you can't demonstrate that you can manage yourself and you can manage this setup and you can make money from trading, risking a dollar on an idea and actually demonstrate that you can do this, then you got no business going and risking a hundred Gs or whatever in the marketplace. Me personally, you know, again, this is, I am a professional. I understand that blogging, journaling, having my trading plan are all necessities. I'm doing the seven truths on a daily basis. I'm focused, I'm honed. You know, Chris and I, when we get up in the morning, we do a pre-market checklist. Every, you know, before a setup develops, we ask each other, are you focused? Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of life that you have to live. But is that not correct, Chris? That's absolutely correct. It's uh, it's a trader's life. Yeah, you got to do this. You got no choice. So Point of the matter here is if you can get to that point and you can pass these first two hurdles, then I think you're ready to risk some real money. Uh, but you can see there's a bit of work involved in here. So um, interesting question, Sean. I wholeheartedly agree with you. And if anything, you know that what I would just simply say is, um, and this sucks for me. <laughs> If I, the education material learning the process works. And by all means, if you want to come into the lounge, you want to ask questions, am I doing the process correctly? As after you've taken the level one, you want to reach out to Graham, you want to reach out to Shark Toshi, you want to reach out to any of our vets on the site and ask and get reaffirmations and stuff. Awesome, sexy, perfect. You want to tune out Brian because Brian's so scatterbrained, he's all over the place. I won't be insulted. 
I really won't. So that's my answer to you. I don't know whether that helps or not. I hope so. Sean, as a follow-up to question two, what would you recommend for those who would like to go into a prop firm coming out of level one to build and grow? Number one, have you done your 100 paper trades? If you tell me you haven't done those 100 paper trades yet, then I don't think you're ready. Number two, do you have a setup that you are absolutely committed to? And really, I like the idea that the day trader trading the big contracts that something like Top Step wants you to take, that's too much anxiety for an absolute noob just coming out of level one. It's just, it's too much anxiety. The statistical odds of you blowing yourself up are probably pretty good. I would say, to be perfectly honest with you, Sean, if you really want to pass the Top Step program, take all three of the TRI programs or take the level one program and sit like Paul did on the site for a year or two, just keep practicing, 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 practicing. And then what I would say is try and find those prop firms that have that swing trading kind of concept. So in that way, it's not as stressful. You can trade the higher time frame setups and still do okay. Because keep in mind, lower time frame trading is extremely high anxiety. Now, the whole point of our education program is we do have day trading rooms where the day traders sit there, you know, uh, you know, just working away on the program. As soon as you're enrolled in the level three program and you can show us you have a trading plan, you get through the pro traders workbench um, module. Um, uh, with Zach and Zach gives you the green light. You can bury yourself in the harmonics room and trade with them. You can bury yourself in the day trader room and work with them. You can bury yourself in the TRI SOF club room and trade with them and, you know, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. And my suggestion is keep practicing paper trading using the SIM on trading view Get to the point where you are actually making a profit and you can see that you're profitable and then go to the prop firms. Don't go to the prop firms while you're still trying to learn. To me, honestly, Sean, your best bet is just to park yourself on TRI and don't go anywhere until you see on a consistent basis you're in the groove, you're taking the setups, you've got a beautiful, pristine log, uh, maybe you're just sim trading on the TradingView account. Maybe you funded a, a, you know, a Forex firm or a crypto firm with 100, 200, 300 bucks, and you're demonstrating that you can make money and then go to the prop guys and, and try and pass their tests. Okay, number seven, because I got to get out of here pretty soon. Hey, Brian, Martin again, does your advice to stay away from Forex? <laughs> okay work for other CFDs like indices or, yeah, no, it's, it's all this. I'm not sure what OK Oil is. But yeah, like uh, the, the CFDs, the problem is, is this is unregulated market space. And if they can steal your money, they will. And what really sucks is there was one guy I remember who actually did really, really well. And he was trading the DAX and he was making a ton of money. And then all of a sudden one day, the CFD firm just disappeared, poof, gone. Log, tried to log in and really probably he was actually taking their money, <laughs> which is so sad. So yeah, I mean, if anything, um, what I would suggest you do, Martinian, is I want you on the site. I want you in kill zones. I want you posting your ideas on, in the lounge every single day and just showing us that you can trade these setups. I can't tell from here whether you can actually trade these setups or not. You know, be active in the daily briefs with me, ask lots of questions, you know, ask me to review. Brian, this is a trade I took. What do you think? Uh, am I heading in the right direction? Brian, here's my spreadsheet of my last 10 trades. This was the setup. Am I following like you suggest? Those kind of things. Uh, and if you do want to do the CFDs, let's work together. You know, let's, let's build a free Google spreadsheet. These are my CFD trade ideas. Here's my 20 paper trade ideas trading this setup using this particular CFD. 
I know, for instance, um, I think Grim actually has a CFD site that he likes to use. I know Raf, he's got a CFD site over in Europe he likes to use. I just, I don't trust that stuff. But I'm an old gnarly skeptic. And uh, I have seen repeatedly a parts broken trading Forex and CFDs. So, uh, number eight, L Tanganator in level one, question mark. We didn't get that in our level one uh, days. Yes, we did review all the setups, trade setups with Grim from the site library. My bad that I am a level one 2022 Q4. My best regards, Miko here. Uh, is that a question? I don't understand. I'm still struggling to work my way through it since I've not been very familiar with any sorts of harmonics. Well, Tangonator is not really harmonic. It's more fib, right? And uh, as I showed you, I mean, really all El Tangonator is, is a trade location, indicator confirmation, price structure, go. It's just that simple. Don't overthink it. So, you know, this happened to be a higher time frame location. You know, we could say a reload zone, right? Oh boy, there's a big reload zone. Do we have indicator confirmation? Um, you know, this happens to be a four hour. Let's go maybe like daily. You can see here, there's a nice bull div that fired here. So as of this point, we'd wanna look for those Ws. And interesting enough, you can kind of see on this particular chart, this was this is trading off a daily chart. There's the bull div, all right? So now, I, can I please have a W in here somewhere? No, nope, no, nope, no, nope. there's a little one. Eh, it worked a bit, we got a half decent, probably like a one-to-one -one risk and then stopped at scratch or even taking the loss. Then you can see, oh, here comes another bull div and oh, here we are working our way back up again. So the setups are there. It's not really a question of, are they there? The question is, are you taking them? Are you logging them? Are you, um, um, you know, just living the trader's life? I, I could randomly pick any name. And if anything, if you want, uh, you know, randomly pick an idea. And I bet I could find an El Tangonator setup if I looked hard enough over the past few months. Usually they're there. Um, so I think, you know, and also Grim, he likes to teach you the three-step setup. That's basically the same thing as the El Tangonator. The El Tangonator is just very specific. And I think in the library, the, you know, the, the example, I think, is pretty straightforward. Uh, range. El Tanguinator. And the only reason why we named this because there was a guy on the site who was from Argentina who really loved this a few years ago. I mean, it doesn't show what the date is on this. Yeah, you can see this is from back in July 2017. So that's like five years ago. Jesus. Anyway, you can see bottom end of the range, market absolutely dumped. Uh, we don't really have a higher time frame trade location, but this was a nice ABCD objective. You can see the bullish divergence is exactly what we teach you in the education material. Uh, Willie, nice and stupidly oversold. I was just even talking about that earlier. And there's a nice W. I'm going to buy the W. I'm going to risk to a break of the bottom. And I'm going to force myself to take profits at the 50% rule. And I'd like that to be two to one risk reward. It's pretty straightforward. It's not rocket science. The issue here is that anybody who says that they really don't understand these setups coming out of level one, you just haven't taken enough setups. A hundred trades. I want you to take a hundred. And maybe, maybe the first 20 or 30 of them were just garbage and you didn't know what you were doing. And that's fine. That's exactly what I want is, you know, the first, you know, 10, 15 trades that you're logging, you're just learning the process. And actually that's exactly what I was going to speak to in this document, but <laughs> it's taking a long time to get through all these questions today. And then I got to wind up. I got to get out of here soon. So uh, yeah. Um, this to me, whoever's asking this question, you just got to do more Miku, right? Where are you, Miku? Get in the lounge every single day, post an El Tangonator setup. You do that, 100 trades, that's basically three months. By time you get to, where are we? We're December. So January, February, March, 
April 1st, you know, keep in mind, great event for all crypto people. The 420 event is an awesome pivot. My hunch is you do those 100 trades every single day. You show me an L Tangonator setup off of whatever time frame. You go through the process of paper trading it. Uh, do the replay function on trading view. Do it real time. No reason why you can't take them. Maybe they're like off of hourly charts, half hour charts, whatever. Don't give me any excuses. Miku, by time April rolls around, I want to see those 100 trades. I want you to show me that spreadsheet of those 100 trades. If you do that, my absolutely guaranteed, without a shadow of a doubt, you will know this L Tangonator set up backwards. All right, last question. Then I got to get out of here. We didn't, we didn't, I did it. What the hell does that mean? Was always thinking it was a level three stuff. Okay, no clue what that means. <laughs> okay. And my answer is 42. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. I saw a really funny video the other day. It wasn't really funny, but it made me laugh. Where uh, Alan said that he was going through an existential crisis when he was like 12 years old. <laughs> I was answering to the guy, Todd, he is with us in level one, but I am doing 100 paper trades. No worry. 100 trades will be pretty. Oh, good, Nico. Do it. Fucking A, man. Just do it. You do it, and I will be so proud of you, and I will know for certain that you are definitely uh, educated. Just do it. Show me the 100 trades. Now, the issue here, Miko, and I've seen people do this in the past, and it angered me immensely, is that they would say that they were doing 100 paper trades, and I'd go through the first like half dozen trades and go, that's not a valid El Tangonator. That's not a valid El Tangonator. That's not a valid. So what the hell are you doing? So if anything, Miko, what I want you to do is I want you to post your trade, and I want you to put it in the lounge. And I want you to ask the community and at me, so I will be in the conversation stream, is this a valid El Tangonator? And then that way I can, we can guide you. Well, maybe your div needs to be a little bit more crisper. Well, maybe your risk reward isn't quite accurate. Is that a valid location, right? All those kind of things. The community is here to help. And one thing I absolutely love about TRI is we now have an absolutely awesome sort of veteran base. We have, we got people, like literally we've been running this place for like five or six, what, eight, geez, eight years now. They're going on nine. We have a killer veteran base. And we have a lot of people that stick around too. Actually, it's interesting. Zach Mann actually posted a, a most, he says right there, yep, the community is so valuable. Uh, I haven't read it all. Anyway. Oh, Brian, I'm going to at you every blessed day. Fine. That's, that's exactly what I want. Uh, okay. Well, just a, uh, hopefully they're positive feelings. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, it's five minutes past one. You all know what I do on Sunday afternoons and uh, New Year's Day is no exception. So, uh, uh, wish uh, Liam and I uh, positive vibes. Um, actually, hmm. um, I thought I had a picture of Lily on here. Um, I don't see it. Anyway, it's weird. I totally shared a picture of Lily uh, the other day with the community. Maybe it's over here. Oh my goodness. Too many charts, my head's gonna explode. You uh, large, no, how about large icons? There we go. And where did I put Lily? Anyway, uh, darn, anyway, I was kind of hoping I could show you. He had a big smile on his face over Christmas, so I think he's in relatively good mood. It's fascinating, he doesn't want to open up his Christmas presents so. though. <laughs> it just goes to show autism. He doesn't like change. And so he actually has like, we got him like, uh, geez, it must have at least a dozen uh, Christmas presents. <laughs> They're all stacked up right in a corner of his little apartment that, that uh, we have him set up in. 
and uh, he won't open any. <laughs> no Christmas presents. All done. All done presents. And he, the thing is, is he doesn't understand. There's like chocolate in there and stuff. If he knew what was in them, he would be tearing them open in a second. <laughs> so anyway, going to go spend an afternoon in autism land. So uh, wish us luck. Um, I, I, you know, your positive vibes are totally awesome. I think we're doing a good thing here at TRI. I was actually going to speak to this, but I think I guess maybe we'll try and do this tomorrow. I don't know. But uh, remember, we do have a raffle coming up if you would like me to try and uh, change your life for the better. You know, one thing that I find fascinating about this uh, TRI experience, and, you know, I, I don't see it because I've been doing this forever. But, uh, oh, darn. Anyway, uh, if you go to the channel, and not when we're not doing the live presentation, there's a nice little uh, sort of advertising spiel right up here. And interestingly enough, you know, a lot of people say life changing is the one sort of expression that they would use uh, to describe their experience uh, going through this education program and me teaching you how to play this game correctly. So you're, you're invited. I mean, hell, maybe, maybe you can do it for free if you win the raffle. That'd be cool. Good luck. Uh, I think we're going to do the raffle next week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, wish Liam and I uh, good luck here uh, driving in the lower mainland today. Oh, it's a bit challenging out there, although it's above freezing, so that's good. Uh, PMA for the win. If you want to uh, send me... Um, uh <laughs> brian's doing a bcs right now anyway i'm just trying to make a positive difference in all your guys's lives look at that uh, yeah all right so these guys are already starting to post long ideas and the weird thing is is that god you think that that the end of the end of the world was coming here in crypto and ironic you know as a closing statement i would simply say you know what happened with ftx and this sam bankman fried had absolutely nothing to do with cryptocurrencies nothing it had everything to do with actually the classic fiat system and why it's so broken and why we're ready to actually uh, transition into this new sort of blockchain based real time settlement. Uh, no, you know, reserve banking bullshit nonsense. I mean, that's half the reason why he failed was because he actually went down the classic banking route. And now you all understand Look at Sam Bankman Freed. You actually now all understand why the classic banking system runs into the troubles that it did. Like AIG, um, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, uh, and the like. They, uh, you know, in the 1980s, it was all the SNLs. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. You know, those those references. Uh, why did the Great Depression happen the way that it happened, and why did so many people lose so much money? A Northern Trust, it happened in UK there just a few years ago. Wouldn't be surprised if before the end of this Fed rate hiking cycle, we hear more of this. The point here is that uh, that's, that's like old banking. That's, that's the 20th century banking. And don't kid yourself. You know, there's a lot of people in this space that think, well, you know, it's just the 1% is out to screw us. I don't think the 1%, you know, a good portion of the 1% likes this any more or less than any of us. This is that, you know, they're, they're, you have to have a system. So the system has to exist. The interesting thing is, is that the old system was a very flawed system. I'm trying to find, uh, here we are. This lady here, she's in a bank. But she's trying to work towards this new age economy, new banking system, new way of settling transactions. So don't just you know go, oh, the banks are all out to get us. There are many, many moving parts. Yeah, there are people like Joey Diamond in the world who will actually, and it's interesting, you go on YouTube and there's YouTubers who are pointing out that, you know, Joey Diamond said Bitcoin's a fraud. And then you see in the actual news release that JP Morgan's actually buying Bitcoins. What? What the hell's going on? Oh, he's lying to you? Oh, oh, there's a surprise. Human beings lie? No, really? 
actually pointed out that one YouTuber I, video I watched pointed out two or three different examples where they publicly say one thing, but behind closed doors, they're doing the exact opposite. So don't let's not get into the, they're all out to get us. Let's get into the, what actually makes a good investment decision? Does it make sense to come in and buy the top of the market? Keep in mind, the uninformed public, they go crazy. I've shown you plenty of charts. And while it was happening up top here, I was saying, I can't stop you people from buying. Why are you buying Sedona Euphoria, all that kind of talk? And now that actually I think this thing's bottoming out and actually looks like a half decent buy, you go out into the public and you show it and people are like, oh, are you kidding me? Crypto's going to zero. <laughs> well, so... Let's maybe concentrate on ourselves and us making good investment decisions and concentrate on what does a good investment decision look like and how am I going to control my behavior around my money? And then maybe it's something like, you know what, I can't trust these centralized exchanges, so I got to move everything to a ledger. And I love crypto as the future, but there's no way in hell. Remember, not your keys, not your coins. Got to take personal responsibility in this stuff, people. And really, that's what I'm all about. This is what JoJo's sort of encouraged me to try and remember. She put a massive amount of time investing in me. Sadly, it didn't go very well through her. Poor dear. But that investment's not wasted. She gave me the ability to learn as much about this market as possible. And I've been doing this game a long time. I speak to you guys the truth. I speak from the heart. I don't bullshit you guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat this and say it's all, it's all easy and peaches and cream. But I will say, <laughs> ironically enough, we're getting to a point where it's getting kind of peaches and creamy. <laughs> so... Question is, are you still solvent after all the nonsense and the bullshit and the garbage uh, has been flushed out of the market? Can you set yourself up to act when you are supposed to act? And then can you act responsibly? That's all the stuff that I actually uh, pride myself on being able to help you guys with. So I'm going to leave it at that. Like I said, wish me luck with Lily. Uh, literally after I'm going to hang up and I'm off to him. Uh, I'll see everybody on the site. Hopefully I come back to like 5 million DMs. Brian, look at my trade. Brian, look at my trade. Brian, look at my trade. Slow and steady wins the race. PMA for the win. Love to have you on the site. All of the only thing left for Brian to say at this point is a big hearty. Bye for now. Where are you guys? Over there. Bye everybody. Thank you.